is DJ for the Tigers. They've been in Lagos a training preparing for the second round, the first leg of qualifiers for the FIBA World Cup, taking place in China next year. And for hmm. what these boys have done, I mean, they, they call the squad a killer squad. <laughs> but then tonight, we're going to see if they can pull a big one off, knowing that they're facing cut the ball and the Tigers are going to Oh. Yeah, surely they are the favourites, right. and they they had the advantage of hosting the last round of the qualifiers, and now they're also hosting this one. So the players should be in a confident mood going into this game that they are the home um, team. Mm -hmm. But they faced a an Ivory Coast side who are no pushovers because right. when you also look at Ivory Coast in their own qualifiers, they came. Um, through a tight group, which also had Senegal, and they were able to finish second in that group. Uh, mm. But don't miss it. They beat Senegal also in the process, so that tells you that they are a very strong side. But the Can roster looks later. better than it was in the early round of the qualifiers, where the Tigers won six out of six. Yeah, but right. the quality of the opposition is not the same now. Then it was Uganda, Rwanda, and Mali. Mm. Uh, Uganda dropping out, Nigeria progressing alongside Mali and um, uh, Rwanda. But now they are facing tougher oppositions, uh, Central African Republic, Senegal, mm. and now Cote d'Ivoire. But I see them picking up the, the points they require. The good thing about the system is the points they picked up in the first round of the qualifiers, they bring it it's into the second over. round. They are carried over. So they are leading already, and the, the mm. top two in that group will progress automatically. Mm. Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal find themselves on in 11 second. points, uh, mm. which is in second place. Mm. So I think in all... After those three games, the, the Tigers should still be in poor position to go on and qualify by the time the, um, the qualifiers are rounded off early next year. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. We've already just said it now. Nigeria well placed uh, to qualify from this group, Group F, of course. Uh, to be precise. Uh, let, let's see what that, you know, that group looks like uh, at the moment before uh, the tip off against uh, Rwanda uh, later today. Nigeria on top uh, with 12 points, uh, followed by Senegal. Uh, like Wilfred said, with 11. So it's quite close between those two sides. But C Central African Republic, they're not too far behind as well. Too. They are nine points. Rwanda, nine points. Cote d'Ivoire, they're on eight. And Mali are uh, on eight as well. Too. So any of these teams can still qualify. Yes. But we know... Uh, the favorites in this group Nigeria. is Nigeria, Nigeria and Senegal. Nigeria and Senegal, yes. And for the fact that the top two would go through, uh, mm. no, even if Nigeria drops from that top position. <laughs> drop to third, no? No, even the third position could also go through. Yeah, but why do you want to do that? Why no, I said the top the, two. Even if best, we drop yeah. from the first position into the second position, that's we still go fine, through. Yeah. So I, I, I find it difficult. I don't see the Tigers dropping to the point that they drop out of the automatic mm, spot. No, for the fact that they are hosting this particular one, the next one, we're not sure we'll get to host we'll the final round. we we'll wait for that in February. But I think they are in good hands. Yeah. yeah. Trust okay. I'll be very surprised if, you know, they don't uh, make it. As, I mean, if they drop out their mm. automatic and slots as well. Too. So, fixtures are yeah, for today. today. Not Nigeria, only Nigeria will be in action. Uh, we have uh, Central African Republic and Mali and Rwanda Senegal. Rwanda Senegal is the first game. Of course, you also have Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire will be at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's the time for that one. So you've got tickets and sales. Just go to the stadium and see how which, you which can. Which stadium? National Stadium in right. the Sports Hall. Okay. If you get that, I mean, most of you that watched the first round, you know, the, mm. the first, last round yeah, of the first round, you know the same how, place. Yeah, yeah. how beautiful that place yeah. is actually looking. And it's just 500 right naira. And you'll be wondering, oh. that's for popular side. Yeah, pop, of course. Popular <laughs> side. But if you want the court side, you know, you have to fail us. Okay. 25. We <laughs> even have the VIP. Yeah. Yeah, 5K. So that's where it is. <laughs> Cut side, that's what you want. You have to shell out the money. My money for it. No, yeah, no. Which, whichever you, wherever you decide to stay, just go and support uh, Nigeria's uh, Dita, I guess. And that's all that really uh, matters there. Let's go from the lads now to the girls, the ladies. They're getting ready. They're already qualified. So uh, they've been preparing uh, for the FIBA World Cup in Spain. Uh, we know that group. Everyone has been talking about it. as Australia, Argentina, and Turkey. But, Cecilia, you saw them train a couple of days ago, and um, they all seem, you know, to be, you know, pulling in one direction. They all seem very confident that they can actually um, go on to, you know, do very well in this competition uh, in Spain. Yeah, absolutely. They can do well, judging from the fact that they played uh, some warm-up games against guys, against the girls. I know, giving them that uh, props and all that. And of course, knowing that they, are, they will be in Turkey to play an invitation attorney and all that, that's mm -hmm. another advantage for the D Tigris. And also knowing that, I mean, just yesterday, the minister, you know, 
kind of, you know, host them, you know, just like a send forth, like so mm. to speak, and all that, just telling them to go forth and represent Nigeria well. We know our record at the World Cup hasn't been good at all. We had to win the game, and of course, for most of these girls, and of course, the coach, they're just expecting something different. But first, we'll listen to the assistant coach talking about Peter Amedu, what he had to say concerning what they've done so far and how expectant all the players are in Spain. We have actually put finishing touches uh, as of uh, day before yesterday that we had the last friendly game. So what we are trying to do now is to be able to uh, go for an invitation in Turkey whereby we will be able to play more friendlies before we move to, to Spain for the World Championship. But for now, I tell the Nigerians we are ready to go. For Australia, we know that they are a big time uh, uh, country in terms of basketball in the world. But uh, nevertheless, I know they're going to underrate us as uh, Nigerian African teams. But uh, we promise uh, as we go there, we're going to shock the world. In terms of watching their games, it, uh, like uh, yesterday, we had uh, a preview of the Asian games that, uh, that they, uh, they played against uh, Japan. And uh, we were able to look at what they have and what they can bring. You cannot, uh, but fact, take uh, the experience from them, their World Cup uh, team. They are World Cup countries, and most of them play in the WNBA. So with, uh, with what we have seen so far, we are able to scout them and we'll go there and do the best we can do. We're just ready to be on the court. We've been training in training camp for a little over two months now, so I can tell you we still have a little ways to go, but we're prepared. Um, I think our team has put in the hard work uh, that is needed to go into the first uh, game against Australia. Like I said before, we're more than prepared. We're ready to take action, and we have... We've concentrated on our strengths, and that's what we're going to bring to our first game. Yeah, we will do our best to be able to get to the second round. That's a goal we are um, trying to accomplish, beating what um, the last group who went to the World Cup couldn't achieve. That's um, our goal. And, I mean, I think um, history is about to be written. We're calling for the gold, gold medal. So you just have to believe it, believe it, have the faith, you know and just put in the work and we're going to put in the work and just um leave everything all up on the court yeah most of us here we've known each other right from like playing on the 19 on the 18 so we kind of know ourselves a little bit and we've played against each other in europe so it's not like a me much of a difference it's just like coming together you know for for just the same goal just expect we the girls the national team the crew just to go there compete work to the game plan and just go there and execute our game and you know leave the rest for god it's all about going there, competing, and see what they can get out. I love the fact that most of the girls are talking about the fact that they want to really uh, not just compete, but see if they can bring a medal home. We'll go for a break <laughs> now. We'll come back. We'll be introducing the guests. That's just join us. <laughs> 